All right, today is Thursday, March 31st, 2011, and I'm talking with beautiful Melissa Cantrell in Dallas. Yay! So glad to be here with you again. <laughs> cool. So did you send Dan off to send out the orders? Is that... He, he, oh, he's changing clothes. I don't know what he's doing. He's probably taking a shower at this point. Okay. <laughs> so uh, let's see. We're going to talk about... I myself. <laughs> Pardon me? I get the room for myself. Hey, all right. So we're going to talk about uh, radiation. Yeah. Big topic right now. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the, the primary suggestions I'd make to people about radiation is to um, uh, check the uh, radiationnetwork.com. And uh, especially if you're along the western seaboard in uh, California, Oregon, California, or uh, uh, Seattle, or Washington. Washington, Oregon. Uh, because the, the landfall is probably about... 12 to 13 days away for the first wave of radiation so it's it'll be important to track the network to see what the levels are because right. it appears that the levels are going to be um, um, you know that there's going to be no immediate uh, danger and uh, a lot of that uh, depends on the um, the prevailing winds right so it, I looked at that website and as, as I understand it um, it's, it's uh, people with Geiger counters, so you can tell what the background radiation is, yep. and then it, it'll turn to a red color when it um, surpasses, I don't know, 65 or 100, mm -hmm. some count that is far and above background radiation levels. Right. Um, yeah, so that's a really good, uh, uh, the, it's really good to check that to make right. sure that, um, you know, you're, you're in a safe zone. <laughs> right. So even though, like, the news has been reporting, oh, we found small amounts of radiation in the water in Michigan and Florida and all of that, when I look at that map, it doesn't show a high amount of radiation. So it well, might not be enough to impact you hugely yet? Or Yeah, I mean, rule of thumb is, uh, rather than believing anything you hear in the media, um, it, it's typically better to turn to grassroots efforts that are actually reporting hard data. Yeah. I mean, TV stations... Um, and news programs, I mean, their their goal is to um, boost ratings and sell ads. And so yeah. anything they can do to cause people to tune in, even if it's completely inaccurate. Right. Um, Fear sells. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's be better to, uh, you know, watch uh, Grey's Anatomy and skip the, <laughs> or, you know, watch, some, watch yeah. something that's entertaining instead of the news because the news yeah. is just the, you know, the same old... Um, uh, round and round claptrap that's always there. It's yeah. just the names change. It's the same yeah. nonsense. Yeah. Even when it's health focused, there's yeah. still a lot of fear in there. Yeah. So, um, so check the radi radiation network. Yeah. Site. So that's the first thing. Yep. And especially if you're in, um, like I said, on the Western seaboard and also Hawaii, uh, I haven't uh, checked to see how, what Hawaii is like, uh, yeah. recently, but that's, uh, those are important things to keep up with. And, um, is it important to be taking a lot of seaweeds before radiation comes? Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting because, I mean, radiation, you can sort of break it down or you can sort of category, categorize it as different types of effect, what I, which no one seems to be really talking about, is mm -hmm. that there's um, uh, the primary challenge is uh, structural confusion or disruption. Um, and, and this runs... Um, uh, in kind of a, a hierarchy. So you've got, um, um, you know, you, you've got a bioelectric field in your in your cells that can be disrupted by elect uh, uh, electronic electronic or irradiation sources. Okay. So that's the first uh, level, and then um, uh, the next level would be um, uh, DNA scrambling. Okay. Right. So, in other words, the blueprint of your cells, how cells are replicating, becomes negatively affected or um, errors are, are in, uh, injected into the code so that uh, it may be a long time before you turn up with mutagenic tissue. Right. And then uh, the other uh, uh, primary challenge is um, uh, existing tissue gets disrupted and that's typically easy to see uh, in the form of burns. Mm, right. And you know and then so if you if you think about that as a um, uh, it's uh, it's um, uh, easy to affect electrical fields. It's a little bit more difficult to affect DNA, and then it's much more difficult to create uh, immediate burns. 
Mm-hmm. So working backwards from that, if a person has um, you know burns from radiation, that I mean that's a, that's the serious because their DNA is compromised and their electrical field. Uh, okay. If you um, don't have burns, then you've got to give some consideration to uh, the things that are unseen. Right. And so in the in the um, uh, you know the kind of um, consideration of how mere mortals and normal people deal with this. I mean, I've heard all sorts of different um, talks that people have been given about what to do about radiation, and I listen to them, and I'm like, you know, the likelihood of people being able to, you know, buy all this weird stuff and even find it. Um, and then there's some things that um, I question altogether, like the the current crop of things like black mica, because mm. uh, black mica is, uh, I mean, rule of thumb is you could... Um, If you, for example, walked to a a chalkboard and took a piece of chalk and crushed it up with a rock, would you eat that? No. No. Well, that's (laughs) calcium carbonate. That's the primary calcium supplements that's so, so that's stupid. Right. Uh, The same way with mica. I mean, would you go and take a piece of black mica and crush it up with a rock and eat it? Um, Probably not because uh, quartz is um, a highly reactive sort of substance that... uh, most likely would be uh, like oxalic acid after it's cooked. Mm-hmm. Like that's the reason you eat raw greens instead right. of cooked greens. Is that if you eat a substance that can act like a seed for a pearl, then that seed will lodge in tissue and collect debris around it to partition that uh, to keep your tissue yeah. safe. And you know while black mica might be the best thing ever, I. I, get to your plants and let your plants get it to you. <laughs> yeah, it's too it's too soon for me to um, consider ingesting something like that, and I would put that in my composting um, yeah. uh, barrel exactly. rather than. You know, I mean, we have like a hundred. I don't know how many gallons it is, like twenty five or thirty gallons. It's massive. Uh, or no, it's actually fifty gallons. I guess it's the size of a barrel. Mm-hmm. Uh, composting. So if I was going right. to use black mica, I would put it in compost yeah. and then like, uh, let your that. plants absorb it for you. <laughs> yeah, add that to my soil. In other words, I'd let the let the plant metabolism make sure that it filtered out and transmuted whatever that material was into human um, or biologically compatible substances. Yeah, exactly. And so the main thing to remember about uh, the radiation, especially for the electrical field and uh, DNA disruption, is that that primarily is only going to happen to people that have nutritional uh, deficits. Mm. So, for example, uh, the big one that people talk about a lot is uh, thyroid issues and iodine. Um, And so that only really comes into play, though, if a person has... uh, severe iodine efficient deficiency so right. in other words their nutrient bucket if you think about a nutrient bucket for every nutrient if mm-hmm. the bucket is empty it's easy to fill with anything right and um and and don't don't most people in the u.s like well especially with the standard american diet aren't most of them having low thyroid stuff and and what are the symptoms of how do you know if you have a low bucket for your thyroid low iodine well i mean the the primary reason people in the u.s have really bad um uh, thyroid issues and iodine deficiencies is that they're they're eating iodized salt and mm. if you if you burn iodine or denature it then it uh, tends to be attracted to the receptor site so you, th- you can think of a receptor site as like a lock and a mineral is a key that goes in right. and uh, so you've got an iodine lock and you've got an iodine molecule but it's fused together in a really weird structure because it's heated and so the magnetic attraction happens at the lock right. to the key but it Except, doesn't open the... Yeah, the, the key can't get in, but it blocks it, so you can never get any iodine in. So the right. iodine's there, and it, it blocks any further right. uptake, and it's just stuck there. Interesting. So the first and primary thing to um, protect against uh, iodine deficiency is to stop eating um, you know, denatured <laughs> iodine. Eat yeah. real iodine. And real iodine uh, can be found even... I mean, there's large amounts of iodine even in things like carrots and beets, any type of root oh. vegetable. Wow. Uh, and also greens. And when yeah. I say a large amount, I mean, if you look at the the uh, amounts in seaweed, uh, like, for example, uh, greens might have like five milligrams per gram of uh, iodine. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, blue-green algae has 10. Okay. Uh, kelp has about 20. Dulse has about 50. Wow. Uh, so if you look at the... If you look at the um, the amount of iodine in different substances... Um, uh, 
the 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 he, the largest levels per gram are are definitely in dulse. Right. And the levels in algae are lower. Um, however, the the dulse and algae, the cell walls of the material are much easily, uh, much more easily broken down, because Easier. they're more of a sugar type of a more of a glycogen type of format. Right. Uh, the the um, Easier the, in the dulse and the blue-green algae. Yes. Okay. So kelp and um, the the uh, cereal grasses, the greens, uh, are uh, a little bit harder to uh, assimilate and uptake. Mm -hmm. So if um, if, for example, all you have is kelp, then I would, um, you know, make sure that I was using some uh, Primal Digest on a regular basis too with that, which I, I mean, I, I do anyway. Uh, why, why? For well, so it would, so it'll help explain. break down the cell wall. Right. Okay. I see you've got your friend there in the background. Oh, uh, yeah, that's Cheeto. <laughs> Not the kind you want to eat. <laughs> uh, well, you wouldn't want to eat the Cheeto anyway. Exactly. <laughs> So, I mean, the rule of thumb with, um, at least for me, with um, uh, radiation is I wouldn't change anything I do on a normal basis because I eat well. Right. And when I say eat well, I eat very nutritionally dense food. Well, so, and you already consume a fair amount of green, so it's like... Yeah, well, we eat lots of greens and we eat dulse every day. Right. And now, one of the things I will recommend to people, um, you know, if you're... Uh, you know, if you're con concerned about radiation, you better have dulse on hand, right. because right now the the um, uh, the dulse supplies are dwindling because people are are buying up and stocking up on dulse because um, you know that uh, that reactor situation over in Japan, mm -hmm. um, the likelihood of a meltdown is uh, fairly imminent. Right. And so, you know, if you think Chernobyl was bad, yeah, I mean, this uh, sucker is going to go on uh, potentially for hundreds of years spewing wow. out radiation. Wow. And so, um, rule of thumb is uh, to protect yourself against thyroid, the first thing is stop eating anything with iodized salt. Right. Because if you're blocking the, uh, the iodine uptake, up, uptake, if you come in contact with radioactive iodine, it will bypass through that. Really? Yep. That's it, the that's the problem. So in other words, if you're eating iodized salt and you've blocked all your receptors, so you so you're you're highly deficient in iodine. Right. When you come into contact with reactive iodine, it's uh, radioactive. It's like a, you know, it's like the it's the difference between like a little bar magnet and the magnets that they lift cars at the junkyard. Yeah. yeah. Um. You you know that your your body will absorb that stuff. And then, um, do you know what kind of symptoms or will you notice anything before you get to the burn? Time or well, most people, uh, unless you're um, really, really close to a nuclear reactor, you'll never get a burn. Right. I mean, you've got so to be you've got to be in the presence of some in, intense radioactivity to to exhibit burn symptoms. So it would be more like um, symptoms people experience in a in a low nutrient um, diet today. Well, it'd be worse though because the instance of cancer will go go way up. Any type of autoimmune like lupus or AIDS or cancer. Right. Uh, will dramatically go up because uh, if you if you have uh, radiation in your body and that's uh, um, changing the the blueprint you have in your DNA to replicate cells every time the cells replicate those errors in the blueprint exacerbate right. or increase so you do right. one generation you've got one generation of uh, error in the blueprint and then you do another generation and now you've got two and then yeah. the next time you've got four and the next time you've got eight and so what will happen is people that have DNA compromises, that's why all of a sudden they'll be healthy one day, and then the next day they'll have systemic cancer. In other words, they'll have cancer yeah. all over the body with wow. no symptoms, and then all of a sudden cancer. It's because yeah. they've gone through that. I, I, well, my story is it's because they've gone through that replicative, um, progressive replicative failure of their DNA to create right. uh um, uh, integra cells. And once cell integrity breaks down to a certain point, it just, uh, you know, it kind of goes um, exponential. Yeah. So when you when you're snacking on dulse, um, so preventative measure. Yeah. Are, are you just chomping I, on it? I just eat yeah. it. Yeah, that's what we do too. Yeah, we just keep, um, you know, that's one of the reasons we have the big bags. So we keep right. big bags that around. And you know, if if a person has challenges with the taste of dulse, they can always get seaweed energy capsules, which are half uh, right. kelp and half dulse. Right. Okay. And those are really good, um, you know, portable also. Yeah. 
Well, and Dulles, also, keep, I mean, Dulles keeps a long time, so, you know, I mean, we keep, for personal socks, we keep about two years of Dulles, personal use Dulles on hand oh. at all times. Wow. Because if something happens to either the Dulles crop or transportation uh, in and yeah. out of Canada, which is where we um, have our Dulles harvested, uh, then, you know, Dulles for us is a core food. Is the is the Dulles likely, like, as radiation comes this way, is it likely to be impacted? Uh, no, because the way the winds blow, it'll hit California. So we right, harvest in Nova south. Scotia. Okay, cool. Uh, so that's, uh, it's, you know, kind of the other end of the country. Right. And the big mountain ranges there that go along the borders of the uh, western seaboard states. I mean, it looks like all the, the projected maps I've seen, the radiation, because of the thermals and downdrafts, all the radiation will be blocked at the mountain ranges there, which cool. is good. Yeah. Good for us. Yeah. Less good if you're in California and, right. and the radiation levels are. You can are have high. adult supply. I mean. yeah. So um, you know, and and the other thing along with that too is uh, salt. Uh, Sunfire salt is uh, you know a really good uh, kind of bulk mineral mm -hmm. uh, type of um, uh, substance just just ingest to make sure that all your mineral buckets are full. Right. And then, uh, you know, there's all there's a whole bunch of different things that people have been talking about that are, you know, sort of esoteric, um, you know, expensive products like the fulvic and humic uh, acid sort right. of products. And, I mean, there's all sorts of products that are available. I mean, the, the rule of thumb is that, you you know, unless you've fixed all your groceries first, all that's nonsense. Yeah. You can't, I mean, that's... You're you know, still blocking your receptors. If yeah, you can't, you can't try to fix uh, uh, grocery infractions by buying some, you know, bottle of uh, fulvic acid and expect that that's going to do any good at all. Right. You, 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 first off, you invest in your groceries, and if you've got your grocery intake is immaculate, mm -hmm. your nutrition at intake is immaculate, and you got extra dollars, then, you know, buy some of these really odd um, uh, endpoint uh, remedial agents is what I think of them. Right. Because, I mean, if you look at fulvic and humic acid, really all they are are um, uh, bi biologically um, processed minerals. Mm. And so, you know, the question is, okay, so if you buy a bottle of uh, fulvic acid or humic acid or something like that, you know, what's the, the, uh, the, uh, the price performance consideration between that and buying, uh, you know, a month's worth of dulls to eat as food? Right. Well, the buying a month's worth of dulls for food is way better. Well, is the is the fulvic and the and the humic acid is that to remove radiation that's already in there? Well, I mean, you know, different people are talking about it in different um, uh, terms, and and we could probably I, actually, we, actually, we probably ought to do. Uh, let's wrap. Do we have any more questions about protecting or preparing for? So, so protecting to wrap that is um, dulls, kelp. Uh, Dulls, blue green algae, kelp, seaweeds, um, and and nutrition and salt. Yeah, and you salt. know, focus on your groceries because the primary okay. uh, the primary challenge is um, you know having an empty nutrient bucket that can be filled with a highly reactive radioactive isotope, right. which is no good. All right, no good. So that's good. Let's uh, let's segue to another talk about how to remove the junk that's in there. Cool. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>